All right, in this video, we're going to start talking about the price floor. More specifically, we're going to check out the minimum wage. Okay. As we said before, this is the most important topic of this chapter. Okay. And um, we look at this chapter because we really want to talk about the minimum wage, and which becomes um, a hotly debated um, public policy. Okay, and um, it attracted a lot of public attention uh, in recent years. All right, um, here what I'm pulling out is the website of the Labor Department, where uh, you can see this map of state level minimum wage. Okay, um, these states with uh, dark blue color means they have their own state level minimum wage which is actually um, equal to or above the federal level now the federal level is 725 per hour okay for example here in florida the state level minimum wage is 856 per hour okay uh arkansas ten dollars per hour okay in California, twelve dollars per hour. Uh, New York State, eleven eighty dollars, uh, eleven dollars eighty cents per hour. Okay, and um, you can also find these uh, uh gray states. Um, that means they have the same minimum wage as the federal level. For example, Texas, uh, seven twenty-five. Oklahoma, seven twenty-five. Okay. Kentucky 725 and uh, if we put these two groups together you would find that the vast majority of the states in this country have the same or above the federal minimum wage okay? some states they have the minimum wage state at the state level but it's lower than 725 for example Georgia Okay. The state level minimum wage is 515. Okay. There are few states in the southeast corner of the country where you, they don't have any state level minimum wage. For example, Alabama, okay. Mississippi, Louisiana, Tennessee, and South Carolina. Okay. So, um, this is the United States. If you go to Europe, you will find the minimum wage uh, was even more popular over there. Okay, that means it's you know um, for almost every uh, European Union countries, they have their own minimum wage, and the level of the minimum wage is much higher than what you see in the United States. Okay, now let me switch back to the slides. Okay. And um, so here we're talking about the price floor, and um, the real world example is a minimum wage. Okay, and we already check out the minimum wage laws uh, in the states. Okay, and um, why it has been so popular. Okay, now here uh, what I'm showing you is the 2020 federal poverty guidelines. So every year. Uh, the federal government will draw these uh, thresholds of income, family income, um, as the federal poverty guidelines. Okay? Um, these guidelines are used for all kinds of the federal uh, government subsidy programs or aid programs, okay? like the food stamps. Okay? And um, so here on the um, Left, you can see the family size, okay, different size sizes of the families. They have a different um, threshold of their annual income, right? Now here, um, I let's just do a little math here, okay? Suppose we're looking at a family of two, okay? Uh, let's see, a single mom with one kid, okay? And suppose uh, the single mom is working for a minimum wage, the federal level, okay? So it's gonna be uh, 7.25 per hour, 
right? Suppose she works eight hours per day and uh, 22 days per month. So she can still get the weekend off, okay? And then 12 months uh, a year, okay? So you can pull out your uh, cell phone or calculator to figure out what is her annual income. Okay. You would find this number is $15,312. Okay. Remember, we said that this is a family of two, right? Um, a single mom with one kid. So we're supposed to look at here, this line, the second line, right? Look at this. The federal poverty line or guideline is... $17,240. In other words, this single mom and her kid are living under the federal poverty line. Okay. Now, many people, especially uh, Democrats, believe this is not, um, this does not make sense. Okay, for someone working hard, eight hours per day and 22 days per month, they are not supposed to live under the poverty line. And then they advocate an increasing minimum wage so that more people can be lifted up, okay, can be, um, can have a better financial situation. Um, here, uh, let's talk about the binding and unbinding cases. Okay? Just like what we did for the uh, price selling or uh, the food price control case. Okay? Now here, um, I already put the supply and demand curves of this labor market on the graph. Okay? Several things I would like to clarify before we start our uh, graphical analysis. The first thing is on the vertical axis, you would find that um, the price of labor here is wage. Okay, that's a price of labor. Okay, uh, more specifically, this is dollars per hour. Okay, so that's a vertical axis. The horizontal axis, instead of using Q, here I'm using L. So more specifically, this is an amount of labor, okay? And the downward sloping curve is a labor demand curve. I use L subscript D, and the upper sloping curve is a labor supply curve, labor supply curve, L uh, superscript S, okay? Now, uh, the first thing we need to um, make sure is the labor supply and labor demand are just like the regular supply and demand on other markets. In other words, we want to make sure the labor demand curve slopes downward. Okay? It's pretty easy to do that. You can just arbitrarily pick two points along the curve. For example, here we start from here, okay, where my laser pointer is uh, on the demand curve, and we move down along the curve. Along this process, you would find that the wage gets lower. In other words, um, it becomes cheaper on this market, right? Labor becomes cheaper. So here on the demand side of this market, let me put it here, it's employers, okay? The firms are you know, um, on this, uh, on the demand side of this market, okay, they demand the labor service, and on the supply side, it's employees or workers. Okay, this is a little um, different from the regular market, right? Like when we talk about auto market, and when we talk about you know the uh, beverage market, the pizza market, we always stay on the demand side. We are one of the uh, customers okay but here on the labor market we are more likely to be on the supply side okay unless you're running your own business okay so here 
again, when labor becomes cheaper, um, we would find that firms would like to use more labor. Okay, so the quantity demanded for labor is increasing. Again, you can find that on the horizontal axis, axis when we move towards the right. And vice versa, when the wage goes up, you would find that the firms are demanding less of labor. Okay? They're more likely to use technologies, machineries, equipments to replace labor in the workplace. Okay? Now, on the supply side, we also need to you know, briefly check uh, if the supply curve slopes upwards. Again, you arbitrarily pick two points. Okay, so if we move up along the supply curve, we find the wage gets higher, and that means the employees or the workers would like to work longer. Okay, again, you find that on the horizontal axis when we move towards the right. Does this make sense? Yes. Because in reality, especially among these uh, minimum wage earners, um, the trade-off in front of them is work versus leisure, right? So when their uh, wage per hour goes up, the opportunity cost of leisure time goes up. In other words, if you stay one more hour, you know, uh, you spend one more hour uh, hanging out with your friends or family members, you potentially lose more money, right? So that's why people would like to work longer or more people are willing to work, okay? So that's why we said the labor supply, uh, the quantity of labor supply uh, tend to go up, okay? So here we already show that, you know, labor demand and labor supply are just like the normal supply and demand. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and put um, some numbers here um, so that we can talk about um, we can talk about um, the binding and unbinding case. Okay. Now suppose here at the equilibrium level the wage is five dollars per hour. Okay. And uh, the equilibrium quantity. Here it's just 100. Okay, again we stay as simple as possible. All right. Now suppose, um, uh, for example, the minimum wage here at the federal level is uh, 725 dollars. Right. So when we go to the right and we hit the demand curve first, suppose we go down here. This is a 80. Okay. So that's the quantity demanded when the wage is 725. When we go, keep going to the right, hit the supply curve. Suppose that here it's 120. Okay. So in this case, we find the quantity demanded here is less than quantity supplied, right? And there is a surplus on the market. Now, the surplus on the labor market is called unemployment, okay? Because we have more people on the market who are willing to work but cannot find the work, okay? So in this case, it will be 120 minus 80, which equals 40. So the 40 um, units of labor are unemployed. Okay, so um, this is a binding case. Okay, for an unbinding case, uh, let's check out this. Suppose the minimum wage stays below the equilibrium level. Let's see, it's four dollars per hour. Okay, when we go to the right, we find here is uh, the quantity supplied, and here is the quantity demanded. Right, so you tend to believe that you know here uh, we find a shortage on this market, but remember here we said that these minimum wage is a price floor, so you can go above it. It's perfectly legal, right? So you would find that the firms they desperately need labor at this point, 
So they're going to increase their pay or the benefit. So the market will go back 